thank all the participants uh, for being here today, twenty uh, second of July, and participate in this uh, the third BNET uh, webinar. Um, the project uh, is BNET Building European Network, funded by the European Commission, with the aim of uh, getting together, present their ideas of international plans, and be funded. Uh, within the sphere, we are organized a series of training activities. Uh, one of which is, is the organization of the uh, of nine webinars. The webinar that's going to take place today is the third webinar, and it's about internationalization processes and enterprise. It's an important uh, webinar because it's going to tackle very, very, very like the, the seven steps of a business international plan, how to develop these this international plans. What are the basic differences between the importation and exportation of products and services? What are the most common, most common mistakes to avoid in the internationalization of companies? Foreign trade tools to obtain useful information? And last but not least, the information about the Enterprise Europe Network, uh, which is the European Commission Network for Internationalization, Innovation and Research, uh, which helps all the European uh, companies, SMEs, to get more competitive and, and international. So all these elements are really crucial for, for, for the development of companies that have the aim of getting more international. Uh, in addition, I am uh, pleased to inform you that from today the uh, BNET call for European Business Network is open. So from today until the 3rd of November, companies will be able to get together, propose an action plan for internationalization, and then uh, after an evaluation period, the 10 best European business networks for export will be uh, awarded of 25,000 euros, 90% of financing, and they will be able to, to develop their international action plans. So it's a great opportunity for all the SMEs. Now I would like to leave the floor to Matt Pratt from the Barcelona Chamber of Commerce, who will uh, uh, present uh, the webinar today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jada, and good morning, everybody. And I would like uh, today to um, to speak about um, what uh, we intend about uh, internationalization process, uh, what uh, ideas or what um, considerations must of companies do before a start uh, an international business plan. Uh, obviously, the international uh, process is um, a reflection or is a, is a process, uh, is a continuous process, but it's really, really important that at the beginning, uh, all companies and all workers and all participants in this process has really, really clear all ideas. And uh, obviously, I will present the, uh, as uh, told to us, Jada, the, the seven steps uh, to develop uh, an international plan. And at the end, I would like to, to introduce or to present uh, some useful tools that can help uh, um, enterprises to, to grow abroad and uh, help them in obtaining useful information uh, to adopt 
uh, uh, decisions, for example, in which markets is better to go, which documentation um, you need, or um, problems that can um, observe if they intend to, to export or, or to import. Well, uh, the the first steps or the the first ideas I would like to to, to introduce is why uh, a, a company and any kind of company be international, and the the first thing that um, um, the common. Uh, um, situation that uh, companies imagine that they start the process uh, selling abroad but that is not correct the most common way to um, to start international activity using is buying not selling and all companies discover that the process of buying is the same process of selling and for that buying products um, from other countries they uh, develop the um, obviously new new products and, and cover new uh, necessities and uh, obviously is an excellent way to explore another markets uh, the second way that uh, a company uh, become international usually is by case. There are a lot of companies that they, they, they not has the idea of going abroad, but they one day be contacted by uh, foreign people, foreign companies, and that discover that if they uh, without uh, developing any strategy, they be contacted by foreign companies and sometimes they can even sell their products. For them, can imagine that if they can develop a strategy, obviously they could obtain uh, better results and uh, um, a best uh, international process. Uh, the third thing that uh, one company um, become international usually because they discover that in a specific uh, targets or for specific products is better going abroad because uh, their domestic market there exists a really really strong competition. That's an example, for example, for uh, olive producers or uh, wine producers that for them is easier, uh, in theory, obtain um, um, a little average of foreign market that try to, to increase um, the, um, the, the sales in the international market. Uh, there are obviously other companies that they start global from the beginning. That's a typical case of uh, technological companies or companies that uh, they establish alliance within uh, other companies. You can imagine, for example, um, a company of um, Palermo, that they has a partner, for example, in uh, in Lithuania, and the first project for them could be perfectly in Germany. Obviously, for this kind of companies that they are um, oriented to a global market, for them, uh, the the process of international is a natural process because they from the beginning, they are international. And obviously, uh, there are another uh, situation that the, the companies start global, 
is uh, the case when a, a company has a, a specific experience or a specific knowledge uh, in one sector, they then can explore or they can uh, take advantage of this knowledge abroad. Or sometimes there are obviously uh, another companies that they know they, they has um, uh, a deep knowledge of uh, a specific market and they can explore obviously this advantage. This knowledge could be even um, uh, buying products, uh, how I explained before. Well, uh, for me, uh, it's really, really um, a, a company at the beginning must consider uh, two things. If you want to sell abroad, it's absolutely necessary uh, having prices to go abroad. Eh? And uh, in this case, it's necessary to put a difference between products and services. Obviously, for companies that intend going abroad, and if they had a, a product, and in a foreign trade, when we're speaking about product, that means uh, a specific code. Yeah? The first things these companies must do is to define price of their companies according Incoterms 2010. And what kind of Incoterms I suggest or I recommend to use? I recommend to use having Incoterms FCA free carrier at Incoterms 2010. Why? Because that is a position, a specific point, a position that uh, shows that a company is intended to ex export and obviously they cannot calculate exactly the cost of transport because it depends obviously that the um, the market where, or the, the type of client goes a goat but for one company if they had the prices according FCA in Coterms 2010 I think it's a good way to demonstrate does this company who goes uh, or has the idea of going abroad. And for the companies that has uh, services, even if it's the more difficult to, to check or to verify the, 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 the service cost, they can imagine that the first question they must answer when they present a service abroad is the question of how much, how much the service cost. Uh, they, companies, obviously, they must consider how much or having an idea or an approximately idea of how much uh, will they can offer this service abroad, calculating approximately the, the, the cost. Just for our clients, having uh, a clear idea. I think it's really, really difficult if uh, I want to, to celebrate a service and I cannot um, do the answer how much the service costs. Obviously, it's necessary uh, having a clear idea, and I will explain later, of uh, what kind of clients uh, I want to sell and obviously to analyze in which way I want to offer my products. And it's really, really important if I want to go abroad is I must have or the company must um, um, have some uh, elements or some factors that do their product or services uh, different in and in in some ways because obviously you are in a really really competitive markets and if you don't have any specific difference it's really really different uh, difficult sorry um, to offer or or to um, to obtain any results abroad 
to be con competitive by price is really, really difficult. Well, here are the, the seven steps that uh, any company, even is a company that develop um, international activity must do. This process, I think, is useful for companies that are uh, at the beginning of the international process, or even it can use this uh, tool or this method, methodol, um, methodology um, if uh, a company has a lot of experience. The seven points that they must consider are, first thing is what do you want to export abroad? What kind of products we want to export? All the products of our company or some specific products or services. After that, the second decision that company must adopt is who will lead, who will be the leader of this process. And the leader of this process will be necessarily the international department. Every company that must develop international activity need an international department, even if it's a, a, a really, really small company, or you can imagine that company with only one person. This person, if you want to develop international activity, they need, obviously, the international department. And this person will be international department, obviously, in an average of his time. Um, well, first thing is what? Second thing is who will we develop this, this activity? And the third thing we must consider is where. Where means in which countries we want to export or to promote our products and services. How many countries we suggest to explore at the same time? Obviously, it's uh, difficult to do um, uh, general rules for any kind of company, but we suggest that one company don't analyze more than three companies by year. Why? Because for every company, sorry, for every market, they need they need uh, to um, they need uh, to know information about this market, and if you don't have any information about the market, it's completely impossible to sell or really really difficult. The fourth step you must analyze is how we sell in this market. You can sell directly or indirectly, eh? and the reasons. We, uh, we choose uh, a specific channel. The five steps is whom. Whom is specifically the client I want to sell. Sometimes the how and the whom will be the same persons, but in most markets, especially if there are distributors of if you want to sell, for example, to uh, a big companies, Usually, I need uh, another uh, intermediate figures to sell abroad. After that, uh, if you want to develop a business plan, you need to analyze when we'll do this activity, uh, which kind of actions and um, we want to do. And, um, and to mark a periodification, usually the companies make a, um, a plan, an annual plan, but even if possible, um, planify the activity at uh, two or three years. And the last point they must consider is how much. How much means the cost of the international plan, 
um, traveling abroad, participation in international trade affairs, uh, hiring uh, people for human resources, uh, obtaining certifications, uh, trademarks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the other way of the how much I must establish uh, an objective of for every market how much money I want to sell abroad because obviously I am making an investment to obtain results. I try to develop more or less the, these seven points um, in the next um, 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 slides. Huh? What? What means obviously that our product or services must have something different something attractive to foreign people. I uh, said uh, some slides before, it's quite impossible or really, really impossible be competitive by price. And obviously our product or our service must offer a clear uh, difference or, 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 or a clear um, attraction and obviously we must communicate this um, this uh, relevant point to to other clients uh, in order to they are interested in other products and in other activities and obviously we products we have we must uh, have the capacity of to produce uh, them if not, obviously, it's absurd to, to try to promote them or to sell them. Well, who? Who is the international department? How many people will be form this international department? That it depends of the company. Obviously, if you have a uh, um, are, um, a small, small, or really, really small company. Obviously, I don't, I can um, have a strong or a big international department. But even I said before, if I am alone, that means uh, a company that is um, integrated by one people, this person must adopt the rule of international department if they go uh, if they um, um, sell or we pretend to sell abroad well why a company should or export or import well uh, a company should export or import, obviously, if this company has uh, um, any relationship or other uh, links with other markets. Eh? Obviously, they if they uh, a company um, usually they uh, sell abroad. Uh, for them is really, really explore new markets. Usually the companies start, uh, for European companies, start the, the process of interna internationalization with the markets are close to them. And, and usually they start uh, with the markets of the European Union. Uh, but uh, I, I um, explained um, some slides before, one company with any experience in theory could start the internationalization in, 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 in South America or with client in Japan or in China. That is the, the example of uh, most technological uh, companies that they start the, um, the internationalization process outside the European Union. And obviously that also companies, they then don't sell abroad directly, but they know that their products are resale outside. 
for these companies, they can explore the opportunity of selling abroad, but they uh, they have the proof that their products or services could be perfectly uh, be sold uh, um, in in other markets. Well, the selection of the markets it depends obviously of the knowledge and the experience of the the company it depends also of the of the product uh, it depends uh, also of the economical capacity of the companies obviously uh, going abroad is synonymous of expense and uh, obviously i need um a minimum of budget if I want to explore markets. And obviously, for the markets I select, I need information about these markets. If not, for our clients, it's really, really difficult to, to justify or uh, they, um, they are um, interested in our products and our services if you don't have any information about, for example, competitors, uh, price conditions, uh, distributors, etc. To select markets, there are also um, some criteria that must company adopt to, uh, to select or to exclude market. And I think for me, it's really, really important the, the language and the cultural communication. Usually companies uh, choose markets according cultural standards. For example, for uh, Spanish companies, for, uh, for them, it's easier to go to South America uh, for the, the question of languages. But you can imagine that even for the companies of South America, for them, it's easier uh, to contact Spanish people because it's easier to communicate with them. Other exclusion criteria could be the cost of transport. There are uh, a lot of merchandise that need, need for example, uh, a specific condition of transport. And you can imagine that uh, frozen uh, products and, and the cost of transport could um, conditionate or exclude some markets. Other factors that are regulator, um, um, regularity factor, that means that if I want to sell, for example, to United States uh, cosmetic products, I must uh, have uh, uh, the, the condition of uh, FDA agency, for example. Eh? Or if I'm, I want to, to sell in other markets, I need uh, to accomplish uh, the, the rules and, and the laws of these markets. Uh, other um, criteria selection, typical criteria selection could be geographical. I can choose, for example, markets that are uh, of the European Union or um, I choose markets that uh, are um, not less than 2,000 kilometers of my headquarters, uh, etc. And I obviously choose markets according to statistics of foreign trade. That means the analysis of statistics of foreign trade um, shows us opportunities to, to buy or to sell abroad. And, um, and obviously, it's another easier uh, criteria to select markets. Uh, I can choose market for macroeconomic questions. For example, I can choose market that uh, has um, um, a GDP, uh, a growing of GDP uh, with um, specific um, 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 growing uh, or markets that they have um, important investments 
in um, in some specific uh, activities. I choose market obviously according to a political um, selection, or um, I can choose markets obviously according barriers. Eh? Uh, I can choose markets where my product is easier to adapt and obviously uh, it's easier for company of the European Union selling your products inside the European Union than outside the European Union. I can choose obviously my market according the life cycle of the of my product. Um, there are markets that is easier to sell uh, products uh, with high technology and other with it's um, it's better um, to sell them um, products with uh, that not incorporate uh, or incorporate less technology eh? and obviously uh, sometimes every company has they uh, their own criteria to select markets and sometimes they um, encourage or suggest them to um, to select markets uh, according to criteria. I said that it's uh, better having a criteria even if it's wrong than not having any criteria to select markets. Well, that's whom, whom is the, uh, the type of clients I want to sell the, my product. Could be direct direct exportation or usually uh, I must analysis every market and to choose which one is the best way to go uh, in this market. Finally, I want to explore the when. The when is. Um, um, a periodification of my uh, promotional activities. That means that uh, obviously in January I can develop all the activities and uh, I year has 12 months and the best thing is to um, to uh, um, to select uh, air, um, the best time to, to develop the, the, the strategy uh, outside. And finally, I need a how much. How much means, means the cost of the, the international promotional activities and how much did they, they must consider how much uh, I would like to sell in a specific market. And obviously to verify if my, um, my aims or my objectives I, are all right. Well, this is a sum up. Obviously, if you want to export abroad, uh, it's important has a business plan and to write this business plan and consider that my process of internationalization be different if uh, my uh, activity is related to a product or to a service. That's uh, the sum up of international plan, where, how, when, how much, and obviously I need to communicate my strategy, I need to communicate my differential points, I need to communicate uh, in different language, the language that my clients, and uh, obviously I might communicate uh, in my website, uh, which different points or um, in what is the most relevant thing of my activity, especially to attract potential clients or potential distributors. Well, I would like to explain also some common mistakes that uh, most companies do, especially at uh, the, the beginning of the, the international process. 
And uh, I think the, the, the first mistake or common mistake is not having uh, a website uh, international orientated. And I explain companies that having a website in English not necessarily means that our website is oriented to uh, foreign markets. Uh, to translate our website, uh, it's uh, um, a condition, but I need more. I need to communicate probably in a different way. Obviously, the, the second mistake or the second thing is not having uh, a business plan. Bus not having a business plan uh, sometimes means that not having an idea or uh, which one are the, the markets I want to um, concentrate my, uh, my activity or my international activity and usually we are speaking uh, or we are thinking um, with uh, small or, or, or medium enterprises the resources of these enterprises are limited and obviously they must concentrate the, the resources in um, not uh, a lot of markets it's better to concentrate the our promotional activities in um, in two or three markets, especially at the beginning. The uh, third thing uh, that uh, or the mistake that has the, the companies that is having that obviously I can develop international activity, not having uh, money or not having resources eh, or not having um, um, enough uh, resources. Uh, to develop uh, international activity or thinking that I can obtain some uh, grants or subsidize eh, that they can solve all our international activity. Um, uh, we need a minimum of expenses uh, for uh, uh, develop international activity. And um, the last question that is a common mistake is not having uh, personal uh, specialized in international trade. I said um, before, I need uh, an international uh, department and this international department, they know the rules of the international activity. And obviously our clients, they want to do business with companies that they know the international activity. Uh, the last uh, common mistakes that uh, not having enough information about the market uh, we want to go. Uh, other common thing is to underestimate the, the competitors, the local competitors or the foreign competitors. That is why it's really, really important to consider in which way my product or my service are different. Eh? And the other thing is to calculate that uh, the, the products or the cost of my product or services without calculating other expenses like uh, cost of distributions, uh, labeling, uh, um, the, um, et cetera. Eh? Well, some advice and eh? uh, the companies, uh, they must look for information or, uh, in internet. They must information uh, in um, organizations like uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, or um, um, other kind of associations eh? because the having information is absolutely necessary uh, to um, to take uh, good decisions uh, uh, to select in 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 a correct way the markets. Eh? Other thing is be focused in selling and promoting our products and other uh, activities. I suggest that be um, outside uh, our company. And the third thing is looking for collaborators people or uh, companies that can help us, banks, uh, custom agents, 
consultants, translators, uh, etc., that they be uh, develop um, our international activity better and in an easier way. And after that, of course, I must adopt. I'm not, I I will. Uh, I have to know as language um, as possible. English obviously is uh, absolutely necessary, but obviously uh, our clients, if I can, they prefer to speak their own language eh, to to facilitate the the communication. And um, um, to sum up the, um, the, the presentation, uh, I would like to show in a short way, because we have not a lot of time, uh, four uh, tools uh, that can be useful to, to select markets to, to companies. And I would like to present the, the trade map I would like to present the, the market access. Uh, I would like to present also the, the trade help desk. And after that, I will present in, in a short way the, the activity of the enterprise European network. Trade map. Uh, trade map uh, provides, uh, in I think, in an easy way, uh, in a clear way, uh, information about uh, trade indicators, uh, maps, obviously uh, international demands, and could suggest also alternative markets. Uh, covers um, to, um, 220 countries, and um, I think, from my experience, is. Uh, really really useful for companies that they know they uh, tariff code or harmonized system code that means that uh, trade map is um, useful especially for the product that uh, they then they have product and they have uh, a clear um, static code of the, the products. I think I put an example of, for example, uh, is only an idea. If I would like to, to sell abroad, for example, virgin olive oil, uh, the, the code of a virgin um, olive code is 150910. And uh, after that, uh, I can obtain um, different things on the on the hand of the slide there is uh, more or less uh, a map where could be the uh, that shows the growth of imports of the the products and um, at the at the right there is uh, a map of a uh, worldwide map with the the most important uh, exporters of olive oil with the same uh, page uh, uh, the trade map you can obtain also the data of uh, the um, the countries that import olive oil i think is is a good way uh, if you know the the tariff code to select markets and obtain um, a specific information. Obviously, it's a tool that it's, it's free. The, the second tool I, um, I would like to present is the, the market access database. The market access database is a tool of the European Commission that uh, help uh, uh, European companies they want to export abroad. Uh, when we're speaking to export abroad, mean uh, obviously um, export outside the European Union. And the, the market access database offer information um, and data of import-export, but especially I think is really useful because it's uh, an easy way to know the, the conditions of the kind of documents that uh, a third markets will uh, 
as to us if you want to sell abroad. Uh, obviously, is another um, tool that I need is uh, is um, especially indicated for products, not for services. And uh, I need to know also my uh, code or my tariff code or I guess code of my product. Here there is an example of if uh, I would like to sell uh, olive oil for example, to uh, Brazil, I would like to export from the European Union to Brazil olive oil. Um, I can obtain uh, with um, this uh, this page information about um, the um, 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 the uh, um, problems that um, the um, taxes they must pay if you want to export this this product, and after that, the specific requirements I must adopt if you want to sell this product. Uh, in this case, in 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 Brazil, for um, for every. Um, requirement I can obtain um, a, um, a show or can show uh, an example of these these documents and I think it's really uh, really useful sorry if you want to negotiate with um, potential um, buyers of for example Brazil and knowing which kind of documents I must present before selling them there is also a useful thing is a trade help desk this uh, website is also uh, a tool of the european commission is useful if you want to import products outside the european union uh, in, inside the european union here there is the example of if i would like to import uh, olive oil from uh, Tunisia to the European Union and you must observe the, the tariffs, the conditions, the preferential quota eh? and, um, and, and I can uh, calculate the cost and the conditions if I want to import, um, for example, in this case or this example of olive oil uh, in, the, in the European Union. And at the end, what is ENN? Is, the, uh, is a tool to support network for small and medium-sized enterprises. It's also a tool of uh, European Commission eh? with uh, more than 60 countries, uh, 3,000 experts, 600 members. And what I think the, the most useful, useful thing that can obtain from ENN is, uh, first of all, information. Second one, potential context, and the third uh, thing I can obtain is um, the possibility of uh, sharing or the possibility of uh, introducing um, um, and here um, is a good way of finding partners abroad and uh, looking for uh, potential collaborators. Uh, and I think it's, um, I then explain uh, an excellent way uh, to obtain if I need information for the, the market of um, the Czech Republic that don't know a specific law or specific um, um, information. I can ask, for example, to our colleagues of the ENN of the, the Czech Republic and I obtain uh, information. And also the, the companies, they could um, the, they could um, introduce or, or look for potential partners, not only inside the European Union, but um, as I said, 
there are more than uh, 60 countries that uh, are in the um, in the um, in the uh, are members of the, uh, enterprise european networking um, and um, e even uh, can obtain uh, potential partners in the united states china or or japan and that is a really really useful way or to explore uh to um, to to go abroad and finding partners abroad on expertise well finding not as good well and for me uh we are at the, at the end of the of the seminars i don't know if there are any questions or any thank uh mark i just wanted to add uh, uh, a few words about enterprise europe network because companies who are intend to participate in this project, BNET, uh, can benefit from the support of the Enterprise Europe Network partners. Uh, for instance, they can, uh, the EN partners, which are, or which we also belong, because we, as uh, uh, Barcelona Chamber of Commerce, CIS Industria, and uh, uh, Lithuania Innovation Center are also members of, of Enterprise Europe Network. Where, together with all the other partners, we can support all the SMEs who intend to participate in the BNET call in finding new potential colleagues uh, who can be members of the team, or also we can help them finding right events for their uh, action plan for internationalization. So uh, I will invite you to, to contact us, but also to contact uh, your uh, Enterprise Europe Network partner in your area in order to find the best solutions for, for, your, for your business. Uh, are there any questions uh, or uh, requests or cl clarifications? Uh, the Q&A session is open and if not, we can thank you. This, thank you, as, you, as you saw, the, the uh, webinar has been recorded, so you will have the opportunity to listen and watch it again through our social networks. Uh, we have the BNET YouTube channel, LinkedIn, uh, uh, Facebook, and uh, Twitter, but also on our web pages. And uh, finally, in the uh, web page of the project. And as final uh, issue i would like to remind you that from today the call for european business networks is open so companies can download all the relevant documents and they can start working on that deadline is the 3rd of november 2019. thank you all and have a great day thank you java thank you everybody thank you thank you bye bye